So one of the things motion and Invacare will require is that you have a six inch gap between the pan and the bottom of the back. And the reason for that is because the back slides down. So a lot of times when they recline, you just mm -hmm. kind of see them come up like this. So then you've built a shelf between the cushion and the back. So you've yep. got a really big gap where you're not, you know, super comfortable. Now, the other thing I didn't even go into is the geometry and how the LNX works. If you have that adjusted, that knee to heel right in the right position, when your legs actually extend out, it goes out and articulates out in one motion. It doesn't have to drop down first or articulate out and then have to push out to give relief. You don't have that pushing or pull contact on it. You took your head off so they couldn't watch your head because you were looking at the display when you were coming back up. We don't look at his head anyway. I know, I know. <laughs> But if you guys get in and try it and see the Oops. difference, like his hips aren't getting jammed down into the cushion, he doesn't feel like he's sliding out. The only place you feel a little bit of that cheer is when you get to about 165 degrees. And that's when most of it is, if you're gonna lay kind of completely flat. Now I'll just add to what Steve was saying about the, uh, the center mount, the LNX. So I was a tech for eight years, you guys probably have heard that. Um, <laughs> The center Have mounts, you told them you were a tech? The center right. mounts on, uh, I'll use quantum, not to pick on, on Dale's uh, quantum here, but um, I've so many times I'd have an issue with patients who would, um, they would elevate their feet, but they wouldn't do it all the way. So it would start to articulate before, or excuse me, it would start to elevate before it articulates. So there's two actuators, the one that allows it to elevate and the one that allows it to, to articulate. So what they would do is they would elevate their feet um, Steve, that's not good. Um, they would elevate their feet, and obviously my seat depth is not right here, right? But what would happen is it would bring their knees up real high, and then once they got all the way up, it would extend, right? Now I would have people call me and say, hey, my feet are up, and this isn't right. I said, well, your seat depth's probably wrong, you know, we'll come out and take a look at it. Their seat depth was fine, and I said, well, you have to continue to elevate. And then it continued to elevate, and once it stopped elevating, it would extend all the way. So that's what you would get. But how many people, when they elevate their feet, elevate all the way every time? Same right? as recline. Same as recline, <coughs> right? Um, Majority of people never recline flat. No, 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 they don't. Which is, you know, like Steve said, the, the variation or the way that um, we top load the, you know, uh, the shear reduction right. where right. others don't. You get most of the shear reduction right away yep. and that's so you're still getting all the you get some of these companies you know. have the six seven inch gaps below the backrest too you know you're you're living with that huge gap all the time and you're never needing it right but yeah. see and then we'll let you do five but if you look at that chair there that's a six inch gap and with the cushion on there there's hardly a gap there at all mm -hmm. you know 